In the simplest of all worlds, we'd just have a big on switch on the motorcycle. You'd flip it and you would just go full tilt. But in reality, we need to be able to control the speed of the motorcycle, have smooth acceleration, and be able to go whatever speed we need to. And that's where the motor controller is going to come in. Now, remember that on a DC motor, essentially speed is based on voltage. So a 48 volt electric motorcycle is going to go faster than a 24 or a 36 volt electric motorcycle. But the other thing is we're just getting more power at those higher voltage systems. So one way to control the speed would be to control the voltage, but at lower voltage, we also have to pull more amperage to do the same amount of work. So wouldn't it be great if there was some way that we could keep our full voltage and yet control the speed of the motorcycle independently of that? That's exactly what the motor controller does here. In fact, that's through a process called PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. Imagine if you have a light switch and you can turn it on and off really fast, like a thousand times a second fast. The light bulb that's connected to it is going to turn on and off. Well, it's, it's only going to have full brightness on and full darkness off. But if you were able to flip it on and off very quickly, you'd be able to get a middle brightness created from full on and full off, sort of creating a, a variable analog from a digital. And that's what this controller does. The MOSFETs inside the controller turn on and off very, very quickly, but the duration of the on to the off is variable. And that way we can change the speed of our electric motor and yet keep our high voltage system so that we have uh, as much or full torque that entire time. Now this one here happens to be a Curtis brand. I've got experience with both Curtis and Alltrax. I have an Alltrax on this motorcycle. This one just happens to be a Curtis. Um, it's sort of a leftover controller from a different project. Uh, they have a pretty good reputation. And let's start off right on the front of the controller here, taking a look at the specs. Now on the motorcycle, it's a 48 volt, 300 amp controller. This Curtis one here is actually a 400 amp controller. Now you're going to want as high amperage of a controller as you can get in terms of oomph. It's going to be how fast you can pull away from a stop sign. It's also going to be a hill climbing ability and power. But at the same time, your batteries aren't gonna to like to put out all that much power at once. And really for range, they wanna put out uh, the lowest amount of amps as they can. So what you really want is a high amperage controller that's there when you need it, but you want to minimize how many amps you're using for cruising to maximize your range. So this particular controller is 48 to 72 volts. That's kind of nice because we could run a motorcycle at 48 volts and in the future, if we decided we wanted to get a little bit more speed and power out of it, we could upgrade by adding two more batteries to go to a 72 volt system and we wouldn't have to change out the controller. Pretty handy. And in terms of the 400 amp rating on this particular controller, keep in mind that generally controllers aren't designed to do that maximum amperage continuously. That's the amperage that you can put through the controller for a little while, doing a big hill climb or accelerating away from a stop sign. You do not want to design your motorcycle to constantly pull 400 amps. That's a lot of power and the controller is not going to be able to handle that. Now on the back of the controller, here's the power connections. On here, we've got several different ones. We have ones for the positive and negative of the battery pack and then we also have two for going to the motor. Now, typically on a permanent motor setup, we actually only use one of those connections. And rather than bore you with exactly how those connections are set up, I'm instead going to point you to the instruction manual that comes with your controller. Now, another great thing is that companies like Curtis and Alltrax put this information up on their web pages. So for example, here's a diagram showing how to hook up the controller. But right now, even though you haven't ordered a controller yet, you can go online, you can download this to get a better sense of how exactly you'll hook that controller up. Now, also on this controller, we have some adjustments. In this case, they're on the side. There's three screws here 
that you pull out with an Allen wrench, and underneath there, there's three potentiometers, which are adjusted with a small screwdriver. Those let you make some adjustments to this, uh, including the throttle response, um, the maximum current. Uh, it, it allows you to tweak the motorcycle. One reason why this is important is without a clutch and with a, uh, a lesser rotation of the throttle than you might have stock, you need to be able to tweak the controller a little bit to make it ride the way you want it to be. You don't want a motorcycle where the throttle is so touchy that just by going over a bump, you adjust the throttle, the motor responds, and suddenly it's not much fun to drive anymore. Likewise, how you pull, a, pull away from a stop sign uh, is also important. The throttle curve, how far you twist the throttle, how soon the controller responds to that can all be adjusted right here with these connections, the, uh, these potentiometers that are under these plugs. Now on some other controllers, you program them. You plug in a computer cable and you use a small computer application to change the settings in the controller. In the all tracks controller that's on the motorcycle, it's the part of the AX lineup of controllers. Those are programmed through a computer. In this case, it's through a, a very basic Windows application. Now, just a couple other things to keep in mind on this controller. On the back here, on Curtis controllers, this first pin is power that operates the controller, the, uh, the, the circuitry, the logic of the controller. Um, that's the power that's sort of the on-off switch to make this whole thing work. And that's positive pack voltage. In this case, it'd be 48 volts positive, but on some bigger controllers, it could be up to 144 volts. Now, the big main power connector that's right next to it is battery negative. That means that on this Curtis controller, the full voltage of your pack exists between these two points that are about a centimeter apart. So anytime you're working on a Curtis controller, take extra special precaution anytime you're doing any connections either here or here because it is possible to have uh, voltage in the capacitors of the controller. So even though you already have everything turned off, you have the battery disconnect pulled, you can still get a pretty bad spark between these two points. For example, if you're unplugging this wire here and you accidentally brush it against that connection. In fact, you can get enough power going through there to vaporize a spade connector on the end of the wire going to this connection. So just a little precaution for you there. Uh, another thing great about controllers like these is they have some safety features built in. Uh, common among them is a high pedal lockout. What that means is let's say you have the throttle on the motorcycle turned just a little bit when you turn the power on. Instead of the motorcycle instantly taking off, you have to fully release the throttle and then twist it before you'll get going again. Uh, also, standard on controllers are um, a, a high current protection. So if it's going too high of a current for too long, it'll uh, drop the current. Uh, this is especially good if you're going up big hills on hot days, long distances. What it does is it protects the controller. So just keep in mind that there are some safety features built in and make sure you read about those in your user's manual. So when you're ready to connect the controller, what you're going to do is Follow the manual for how exactly you connect the power cabling. You'll need to physically mount the controller using its mounting points to the frame of the motorcycle. And then, last but not least, you're going to need to wire up the throttle. 